Yeah, we'll go for the next experiment. So, like, uh, effect of putting a reflector at the back of the antenna. We'll see uh, how how it is like uh, helping us, or uh, and what what will be the effect if we put a reflector at the back of the antenna at what distance. So that is our second experiment. So, uh, we'll what we need again uh, a smartphone, laptop, uh, and uh, a metal sheet, or either a cardboard, where, and which is covered by aluminum foil. So that that is needed here, and instead of uh, like even you can use a uh, like a measuring tape, and uh, here again uh, this is like a uh, the similar setup like uh, as uh, like when we saw you know first experiment at the transmitter you need a smartphone uh, or a, a hotspot a uh, hotspot at the receiver you can use a, like smartphone either a laptop uh, you can see there's a, a metal sheet in my hand. So uh, it's a, a copper metal sheet. So you can take this and uh, keep. Uh, uh, you can rest it uh, parallel to the ground and at a certain height from the ground. And you can take your cell phone and you can see. So uh, you can measure like first power without the reflector, uh, like from particular distance. Or uh, maybe you can measure like uh, uh, like uh, similarly in our first experiment we did, and uh, then you place this reflector at a certain distance and you can also measure like at what distance uh, your power you, you're getting the maximum power so at cer certain distance you will uh, get the, the minimum power at certain distance you will get the maximum power and you can measure like what is what is that distance and uh, you can find whether it's a lambda by two or lambda by four or a lambda so that you can find at what uh, uh, wavelength you're getting the maximum power and uh, you also can perform uh, like another experiment within this, uh, the sub experiment, you can say. So uh, you can measure the power, increase in the power at certain distance. So that's similar to our first experiment. So that is our second experiment. Uh, and uh, again, we have to take uh, certain precautions uh, as uh, it should be kept at the center of the uh, room or uh, area. So that, that we can do. And uh, like we should be little away from the setup. So especially from the transmitter or um, and the receiver for a while. So while taking the observation. So this is our second experiment. So yeah, this is like, uh, I have uh, kept my cell phone here on table at certain distance and I have moved slightly here and there. And, and yeah, ideally uh, it should be at a height so that- um, Yeah, ideally, but just, uh, this is just an, uh, like uh, a pick uh, how you can- Yeah, yeah, for them. Phone. For their experiment, yeah, it should be. Yeah, it should be at a certain height, so so you can uh, do that. So this is again a simple experiment, and you can see at uh, what distance from the reflector you're getting the maximum power. So that that uh, that answer we are expecting from you, and we are waiting to get that answer from you guys. So that is the, the another experiment and we, once you share with you uh, once you share your result with us then we can tell you like uh, at what distance you get the maximum power so this is simple experiment okay so uh, anything you want to add this yeah yeah there is a question what kind of tool we can use to keep the phone and laptop at the same height uh, chairs can no be more than the, more than yeah so you can of course use chairs or any other uh, non conducting material yeah. uh, or non absorbing material uh, avoid water and and so on uh, you essentially i think the it will be nice if the reflector is uh, more symmetrically uh, placed with respect to the uh, laptop uh, whatever uh, your uh, mobile phone as a radiator and uh, you will find that uh, the what, what happens is there is a reflection of the signal that is going backwards uh, from your uh, transmitter and that reflection uh, reflected ray also comes towards you okay if it's reflected with the proper angle and uh, interferes with uh, what you get directly in your direction, directly from the uh, radiator. And the combined effect of it is what you're gonna see. And depending on the phase relation, uh, which will be dependent on how much it has traveled back before getting reflected and, and extra distance it traveled to uh, 
come to uh, you know place where the direct signal uh, starts towards you that extra path length as well as the reflection giving you 180 degree phase shift all that will decide how the uh, constructive or destructive interference uh, will uh, change the value that uh, you get in power now uh, you will find that you can vary the distance uh, what will be nice is you don't change the location of your radiator you change the location of your reflector so that there is no other changes due to distance change and uh, you will find uh, that uh, now because of this reflection you are the effective radiation pattern the effective directivity or preference for direction of radiation has uh, changed from the original situation without a reflector so you might even find keeping the distance same if you move sideways or up and down you might find changes in power which were earlier were not so apparent now they will become more apparent because the beam uh, the, the sector in which it was radiating has shrunk from what it was earlier it may, may have been omnidirectional now it is certainly not radiating backwards right whatever power was going towards the back is being reflected so you will find uh, it might not even hurt to take your measuring instrument behind the radiator uh, behind the reflector and make sure that you have really shielded the radiation coming in that direction the experiment that you could have done even earlier in the normal first experiment you could have put a plate in between and seen that it blocked the the radiation it can also happen that the if the both the sides are uh, connected electrically uh, then you will find that you have set up some currents on this uh, metal surface it will because of the continuity it will also correspond to some currents on the front side of it okay while you are trying to block it now it is acting it is receiving some radiation from the uh, uh, your mobile phone and now becoming a radiator in its own right of the size of the plate that you have put and you might get a diffraction pattern or a directivity pattern associated with that and the current distribution that it might have set up and so uh, you will find that uh, you know don't be surprised if you get more power uh, right because it's collecting that power over that area given by your primary radiator and radiating it towards you in a focused manner of course considerations of this size lambda will decide whether you are in the far field or in the near field uh, so you will see this effect of the diffraction pattern only when you are in the far field which might require you to be far enough uh, so keep all these things in mind uh, and do variance in this uh, there will be also directivity okay in the sense you will find that uh, now if you go to uh, a in the plane of the reflector that you have put right you may not receive as much radiation right as you are receiving earlier uh, and certainly behind there will be a shadow so you can measure the beam pattern also it's one of the fundamental uh, ways we use equipment in radio astronomy because we are not interested in looking at the ground we want to use all our resources to look upwards and so a uh, ground reflector is always a common uh, uh, scene uh, in all the uh, equipment we use for uh, radio astronomy and you can see like uh, uh, first you can note whether your wifi hotspot is operating at 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz and based on that you can convert into the wave, uh, your wavelength and then you can see at exactly what wavelength you're getting more power you can even uh, do this experiment uh, like you do the, the reverse way young yeah young double slit experiment many people when i ask uh, what did they 
do this experiment for uh, and they say we use that to measure the wavelength of uh, the light that the source that they were using similarly here if you do not know or don't want to know what the uh, uh, whether the source is at 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz uh, you can infer that from the way you will see the uh, peaks occurring as you move the plate behind. You can think about it yourself. I'm not going to say anything more. It's a straightforward thing. Uh, and please try to relate that to a reflection and the extra path length traveled in addition to the uh, additional phase shift due to reflection, uh, that is pi. And then uh, the, you can set up uh, an equation to say how often or where, at what, what distances you will get the peaks uh, and uh, how they will differ as you change the distance. And from that, you can invert this, as uh, Jameer said, and uh, even find out the wavelength. Yeah, this is the procedure, like how to perform it, and I have already explained it. So anything you want to know, uh, shall we stop and you can perform the experiment and so we'll see if you find any difficulty we can discuss in the later session uh, what are the, the antennas in our mobile phones tuned to the i mean basic uh, standard thing is lambda by four right but mobile doesn't has that much space so is it like lambda by eight or uh, tuning or lambda by 12 or something like that pardon yeah the antennas in the mobile at what uh, level are they tuned means basically we tune the Dipole antennas at lambda by four to use minimum power. So in mobile phones, it will be too large antenna. But so no, there there are ways of uh, yeah, there are ways uh, to shape them. Uh, okay, there is no reason why it has to be dipole like uh, uh, extension. Okay, they can be loops. They can be a variety of other shapes in which uh, they can achieve similar things. Uh, so basic configuration is lambda by four only the tuning of the antenna no no not necessarily it depends on it's basically the current distribution and uh, you know retarded potential that you'll see uh, right mm -hmm. okay so it, it, it's it's slightly complicated than the than the normal consideration Although the simple resonance uh, thing uh, is uh, lambda by four on either side, right? Or monopole of lambda by four size. There can be short dipoles. Uh, depends on what uh, what has been compromised. This is about the calculation that I had suggested you to do. There is uh, Isan Mauli Ghosh has uh, written that's so considering a bandwidth of 2.4 gigahertz. Ah, so bandwidth of 2.4 gigahertz is not correct. The bandwidth, that's the center frequency, 2.4 gigahertz. There will be a width of signal around that, which might be, you know, typically the, uh, uh, you know, maybe fraction of a Gigahertz. Yeah, very from device to device, like 40 mm -hmm. megahertz or 80 megahertz. Yeah, right. So you uh, you need to take that into consideration. Uh, that, of course, will give you many orders of magnitude uh, increase in the power uh, that you have available. Uh, so he's saying 4 Kelvin with 2.4 gigahertz uh, does the gives him minus 100, I believe minus 100 dBm, right? That is not as low as I thought it would be. Um, so I think, please check uh, the bandwidth that you used. K uh, times T, you can easily see what that would be, right? It's going to be typically 10 to the minus 23, right? And maybe, you know, with 4 and uh, 2 point, 1.4 might have five. Uh, so it, it will be much, much lower. I think your jacking up has happened because of the bandwidth you might have assumed. Uh, so if you use a realistic bandwidth, uh, you will get some power, but it's still on the higher side uh, 
uh, you are right. Um, so please check your calculation and see what uh, value of Boltzmann constant you have used and so on and so forth. Any queries about the? Uh, sir, can you show the procedure wali slide again for experiment two? First, you need to create a hotspot on mobile phone and connect to the laptop hotspot and then disconnect the phone from the internet. So as we already like mentioned, uh, then place the transmitter and receiver at the fixed distance, preferably on two chairs or slightly higher from the ground and keep the mobile phone vertically with the like support on the like side or uh, which can hold the phone as well as and uh, we need something to support the uh, plate also and take a metal plate and plate it is that uh, place it at as a back of the mobile phone and move the plate slowly and note the distance from the maximum to minima so like we, you can measure uh, like at what distance from the cell phone uh, and the distance between the uh, plate and the phone so you're getting maximum power and the minimum power you can note down and note the difference between the power and without reflector Thank you, sir. So uh, these things are already there in the manuals, uh, which is provided to you. You can go through it. Uh, still, if you have any doubts or confusion, so you can play with us. So keeping everything same, you can also rotate the plate. Okay. About um, keeping the same the... distance. Mm -hmm. Rotate, uh, you know, take the plate around the mobile thing and then you will find that uh, signals uh, that were meant for you are being enhanced and sent to some other direction based on the orientation of the plate. Uh, Should us move the metallic plate uh, vertically and horizontally too or only vertically? For the first, the experiment that is listed here for which the procedure is given, you change its distance from us. Okay, that means the it's like the wall distance change by moving it away or closer to the radiator okay okay thank you so that's the primary experiment the other side things i was mentioning was uh, tilt the plate uh, rotate the plate in different directions uh, so that uh, you might get this enhanced power uh, for some other user in some other direction. When it is the movement of the plate is along the line joining you and the radiator, that's the main experiment. Uh, sir, actually, I had one question. Like, are these an antennas that sensitive to detect Doppler shift in this case? Like, if we move the transmitter at particular velocity? Yes. If you play some music, this is an experiment we used to do. Uh, uh, you will find that uh, I think uh, nobody would volunteer their phone, uh, but if you could play some music or some tone on it, uh, and uh, I think Jami Rashish, you had done this, right? Experiment where yeah, we have done this. Uh, tie it with a rope and and then swing it, uh, you know, at some steady speed. Uh, in a circle, and then you would uh, hear the Doppler effect. Uh, so, so, same thing happens for the radio waves uh, as it happens for the sound. Uh, no, actually, I was talking about uh, in this case because whenever we move our receiver at particular distance, H, then it takes some time to like get the exact reading. So no, that, this but then you are moving it very slowly. Okay. Yeah. So I think I don't think the, that effect is uh, causing anything here. Uh, changes that you see. Okay. When the speeds are high, you will find that. Uh, suppose I'm uh, I'm moving in a car. All right. Uh, let's say there are two cars. One one in and they're moving at different speeds, and uh, one of I mean, apart from the fact that uh, you will have a reduction in the or in increase in the distance, but just over a short time, you will see the the, the frequency also changing. Uh, sorry, uh, here I mean like uh, like initially in this experiment we move uh, like 
quite slow yes uh, st- still like it takes some time to get the exact yeah, that is to get a steady uh, reading because of the other fluctuations okay okay, okay. so then, you, which is an experiment i encourage you to do where you keep the in the original setup the keep the primary setup fixed and then just take readings one after another and then you will know the time scale over which variations occur okay uh, inherent some, some inherent variations occur and how long you should wait and uh, you know get a steady value or how long you should uh, average to get a more accurate value okay then in this case like uh, the antenna uh, present in our laptop will be in sensitive like whenever we move the transmitter with particular velocity v that is some comparable velocity yeah but it, should, it it will be detectable right the doppler unle- shift yeah unless unless it changes the frequency significantly okay because i am i'm sure people have taken that into account they must be sending some reference signal also okay with the coded data so that even if you are moving right it would uh, take care of uh, the rate at which the bits are received okay they might be slightly changed the rate and they will be interpreted correctly because of the reference oscillator uh, also that information also supplied together but those are real gory details of the of the transmission and but here with the velocities that you are likely to move at uh, you are unlikely to uh, see any significant change because of the doppler it's as good as negligible i guess yeah, yeah actually i was just the fact that you are moving itself might cause other effects like uh, the variation uh, of the field within your room which is caused by reflections from multiple uh, reflectors right remember that uh, you may not exactly get the value that you expect at a certain distance because of complexity arising from these other reflections and also one thing to note is that uh, human body also reflects so Uh, it is advisable to take uh, uh, stay away from the setup or keep the setup at a distance from you uh, while the measurement is settling down so even if you move slightly so that will affect your observation sorry do yeah so we have uh, human body has lot of water and uh, water absorbs uh you have some clothing that might reflect so lots of things can happen. anyway you can uh, you can actually measure these things yourself and get a sense of it exactly. <coughs> by asking your friend to stand okay while you take the measurements in between the radiator and the receiver and see whether whether uh, it's making any difference yeah so experiment yourselves uh, these are just the primary guidelines uh please uh, have more fun uh than just taking the readings and producing the plots and the reports uh, we please use this as a, a great learning and exploration experience uh, sir the body interaction which you recently tell like will it be similar to the shadowing effect yes it might primarily absorb the radiation uh, at some level uh, as much as uh, we say that uh, you know we should not expose ourselves too much to this radiation right we must be absorbing it if you're just reflecting it we don't need not worry all right okay maybe we can stop here and uh, <clears throat> i will meet you again at 2 o'clock and so isan, time- the the value that you get is still uh, somewhat uh, 40 megahertz is what 10 to the 6 23 right uh, you will get only and that's uh, watts only watts uh, okay okay you get another three orders uh, yeah you get another three orders and uh, six nine orders uh, yeah that looks about right yeah the numbers that you have are fine yeah based on the bandwidth you might get slightly different numbers uh, but they will all be similar so maybe what you should do is per megahertz find out 
how much power you get per megahertz so that all your numbers can match based regardless of what assumptions you make about the bandwidth.